Your News, presented by Brian Richardson. Hello, welcome to Your News. Here are the big stories. People at South Parkway Supported Living Services hosted an elf afternoon with festive games, delicious baked goods and plenty of hot drinks. Thanks to your support and a generous donation by Progress Care Housing Association, this happy bunch of good little elves raised our Christmas spirits and £623 for the Alzheimer's Society. In the last edition of The Newsletter, we told you about the challenge Amelia set herself to complete the gruelling Yorkshire Three Peaks walk. Seven-year-old Amelia wanted to raise money to buy disco equipment for her Auntie Laura's day service at Bramley. Well, she only went and did it, and in fact, Amelia raised four times more money than she had aimed to achieve. This just goes to show that you should never underestimate people based on their age, size, or any other reason. This wonderful little lady spent time with the folks at Bramley Day Services when she dropped off her whopping check for £1,072, and Amelia even had time for a quick cuddle with her Auntie Laura too. We're always proud of the people we support across the spire, and the past few months have given us plenty to smile about. Bright Sparks Theatre took to the stage again with their smash hit, Nice to See You, To See You Twice, and it was great to see so many of you got to see the fantastic show. And of course, it doesn't matter how good the performance is if you can't see the actors. So lighting engineers have a very important role within the theatre. Lighting all the actors and creating the atmosphere needed for the scene. Enter Wayne from Hillside, who did a brilliant job of keeping on top of all the lighting changes. Wayne already entertains audiences with his music mixing and DJing skills. He jumped at the chance to learn a new skill of theatre lighting engineer and the performances went off without a hitch. Well done to Wayne for lighting up those bright sparks. Holt Park have been spreading seeds of joy with their amazing sunflowers. They can proudly boast that their tallest sunflower reached a whopping 195 centimetres. That's six foot three inches, which is way taller than most of us. Holt Park's growing success meant that they came out top at the Scarecrow and Sunflower Festival 2022. Blooming marvellous. When Alan announced that he was going to fundraise with a dry swim, nobody was quite sure what to expect. On the day, he had everyone laughing when he ran around the room swimming by dramatically waving his arms and legs. He really concentrated on the task in hand, counting and timing his strokes to perfection until he had completed his challenge. How could Pudsey Community Base not get into the spirit of children in need? Not only did they sport temporary tattoos of the legendary Pudsey Bear on their arms, some of this lucky bunch also got to meet the great bear himself. Everyone did an amazing job getting involved and raising awareness for the charity, which does so much to improve the lives of less fortunate children across the country. And congratulations to everyone who has celebrated their birthday since our last newsletter in October, especially Mark and Donna, who both celebrated their 50th. Here are the stories across the city. We always love to see people learning new skills, showing us their achievements and striving for independence. At Bramley Day Service, they've been working hard with our friends at Artlink West Yorkshire. There's been a catwalk fashion show and they've created some wonderful artwork. In fact, Artlink was so impressed by what had been produced that they framed them and created a beautiful collage showcasing the great time you have all had working together over the past few years. Also, Andrew loves writing. Whether that's keeping notes, a diary or more creative writing, he enjoys showing off his extraordinary handwriting skills. Emma at Crossheath Respite has been working hard on building her cooking skills. She recently made dinner, not only for herself, but for all her friends at Respite too. She did this expertly and was rightly very proud of herself. Well done, Emma. It looks absolutely delicious. And Kathy has been learning how to sew at the Pudsey base. She's taking it all in her stride and loving it. Keep it up, Kathy. And a group at Hillside enjoys their sessions with Yorkshire Dance. 
Several of our bases have been embracing new technologies recently. People at Holt Park Base have loved learning to use the interactive projector as part of the happiness program. Whilst Tony at Heading in Heart has been letting his creativity loose, learning to use the new paper cutting machine. Of course, new equipment doesn't always have to be about learning new skills. Edwin's new beanbag means he can get out of his chair and he thinks it's very cosy. And Andrew loves his brand new and comfy wheelchair. When Kelly moved to Leeds a few years ago, she had one major goal in mind, to spend time with her family. In the run-up to Christmas, Kelly has enjoyed several visits with her family. She has even reunited with her beloved pet Budgies, who were so happy to see her that they were snuggling into her ear. Kelly is a very proud auntie to her young niece too. We all know it is important to eat well and exercise regularly to stay healthy. Throughout last year, Pudsey Base has been leading the way by hitting the gym regularly throughout the week. This has really helped to keep everyone active. Richard has been braving his fears of heights by working on the step machine, but he is much happier on the bike. Nicola and Hannah push themselves regularly on the spinning and rowing machines while Kevin works on his muscles. Irene continues to do regular 10Ks on the spin machine and she has racked up so many miles now that she could have completed the Tour de France. David from Bramley has been focused on healthy eating and is proud to let everyone know that he continues to lose weight. He wanted us to pass on his message, if you eat healthy and exercise, you can lose weight too. Ed from the Leeds Rhinos Foundation has started running a weekly game session with the folk at Airborough Base. Lots of you have been enjoying going to the rugby and football matches with Aspire and it was all smiles from Endercliffe at Headingley Stadium. Curtis and Alice enjoyed themselves from Barfield Respite too. Judging from Curtis's face, it looks like Leeds were doing well. We're looking forward to the matches starting back up in 2023. Also, the FIFA World Cup was back. Many of you gathered around to watch England play. We cheered as they fought their way through to the quarterfinals. But sadly, that was where the tournament ended for England. We all shared pride at their efforts, fingers crossed for 2026 and hope it brings better results for the team. It is brilliant to see you all getting back into holidays and day trips all around the country. Tom had a day out in Blackpool with Tim where he enjoyed sightseeing at the Blackpool Tower and playing in the arcades. Gareth, Chris and Susan travelled up to Bishop Auckland. They enjoyed crabbing on the beaches, stopping at cafes and visiting museums they learned about the history of Auckland. They also saw old trains and went to see the Angel of the North. Marie, David and Jane travelled a bit further afield to Wales. They spent time on the beaches, visited all the best attractions and ate lots of delicious food. Looks like they had an amazing time. Andrew, Caroline and Jujin got into the Christmas spirit by spending a few days in December in Durham. They enjoyed seeing Robin Hood in pantomime, visiting Durham Christmas Market and dancing the night away. We love Leeds, its culture, landmarks and people and you've been getting into the community and exploring this fine city. Chris spent a lot of the year with the Leeds Playhouse where they offer great activities and days out plus brilliant shows. Stephen visited the ruins of Kirkstall Abbey as well as taking a trip round the Abbey House Museum where he particularly enjoyed the interactive Victorian street and shops. He also took a trip into the city centre where he enjoyed visiting Leeds Art Gallery with its beautiful domed ceilings and art exhibits. Come rain or shine, you've all been getting your fresh air with long walks, farm visits and bird watching from Golden Acre Park to the sanctuaries and zoos. We love seeing everyone making friends with the animals. When people from Airbra base decided to get out and about, they ran into a familiar face, Matthew Wolfenden from Emmerdale. He said hello to everyone and kindly posed for a picture. Speaking of familiar faces, some of the group from Hillside Base made a trip into town to see His Royal Highness King Charles III. The King arrived with a police escort and security team that still had time to greet people. He shook hands with Alan who told the King that he was late. Still everyone had a great day and what an honour it was for Alan to meet the King of England. We all know the importance of looking after the environment and we try to recycle. 
we particularly love to see you getting involved in Going Green. Hutsy Base got involved in Conquer Collecting. They delivered their finds to the Seed Collection, where professional gardeners across Leeds are planting the seeds so that they will become mighty trees. At the Holt Park base, Kieran took the gardening task into his own hands. He grabbed the biggest rake that he could find and gathered up all the dead leaves. We're sure it looked absolutely beautiful when he was finished. Hillside have been working hard on the allotment. Not only have they planted and grown lots of new plants and greenery, they have also been building a polytunnel. This is a plastic and metal structure that keeps hot air and moisture in, which helps plants grow. Great work guys! The ghouls and ghosts came out in force for the Halloween celebrations across the spire. You wowed us with your pumpkin designs and Halloween themed costumes, and your decorations were both fun and frightening. However, the scary keep out signs and skeleton at Farfield Respite Service didn't deter anyone from entering the building and enjoying their stay. Hillside's annual zombie walk saw hordes of zombies, monsters and devils roaming around collecting money which they donated to the Bright Sparks Theatre Group. There were countless parties, thrillers and monster mashers with amazing costumes, delicious food and lots of dancing. We've been haunted by ghosts, chased by skeletons, abducted by aliens and hocus pocused by witches. It's clear you have had an amazing time. We had a wonderful collection of entries for the Christmas card competition again this year. We saw paint, pencils, ink, cotton balls and lots of glitter. Our chief executive Zoe Bourne was involved in the judging and when she announced the winners she remarked on the creative talent that people had shown and the high standard of art they produced. Prizes went to Jason, Janet and Stephen in the East North East services, Joanne, Laura and Tony from the South South East services and Amy, Louise and Dougie from the West North West services with the overall winner being Louise from Holt Park Community Base. Louise's beautiful design was used on 2,500 Christmas cards that Aspire sent out. Well done to Louise and everyone that took part. We're already looking forward to seeing your designs on next Christmas. As the chilly weather set in, you came out in full force with Christmas spirit and excitement, from crafting lanterns and wreaths to decorating Christmas trees, hosting fairs to attending parties, meeting Santa to exploring garden centres. You had an amazing time. Gemma made a nativity crib at Middleton Base, Ian built a gingerbread house and Robert made a chocolate log. Our wonderful band Skyfallers were kept busy throughout the festive period giving live performances including at the beautiful Octopus Club Christmas party. From all the lovely pictures you have sent us on Facebook it looks like you all had a very Merry Christmas. We would like to wish Sheila Walker, Annette Munro all the best for their retirements. Between them they have been supporting people with learning disabilities in Leeds for 23 years. And a warm welcome goes out to our new health and safety manager, Paul Horton. Paul brings a wealth of experience of leading on health and safety in care and support settings. Since his arrival, Paul has been getting out to visit services. He has been focusing on our evacuation policies and processes and reviewing service plans for dealing with emergencies such as the loss of heating, water or both. Staff should keep an eye out for Paul's weather warnings which are informative. In order to raise awareness about Aspire and the services we offer, we participated in the International Day of Disabled People's Marketplace event held at Leeds City Museum. Lord Mayor Councillor Bob Gettins and Councillor Kevin Ritchie, one of our non-executive directors, gave speeches about the progress and opportunities for people with disabilities in Leeds. They both stopped at the Aspire stall to talk to us about the work that we do. And Chris, with Alice, also came to say hello, which made Carol's day. Later in the week, our friends at People in Action put together a collection of musical performances at Leeds Kergate Market. Amongst a number of talented singers, dancers and musicians, we were thrilled to see Chris and Sarah from Hillside, Becky, one of our involvement coordinators, and our very own band Skyfallers take to the stage. Sarah and Chris each gave solo performances, and we all laughed 
when Chris's friends were dancing and singing along in the audience. Chris was a true professional because he carried on singing throughout the technical difficulties. We are so proud of the hard work and immense talent that Chris, Sarah, Becky and Skyfallers showed in their performances. A huge thank you to People in Action for organising such an impressive show. And now for some sad news. We are sad to report the deaths of Carl Hill, Joanne Longbottom, Frank Garvey, Erica Donoghue, John Lord and William Blair. They were all much loved and will be missed by those whose lives they've touched. Our deepest condolences go out to their families and friends. Each year on the 11th of November we stop to remember those soldiers that lost their lives in World War I and all the wars that have followed. You may have joined in with the minute silence, donated money to veterans or worn a poppy to show your respect. At Headingley Heart they created a beautiful window display full of bright poppies and soldiers. Our friends at Yamsen held a ceremony scattered poppies and played musical tributes including with bagpipes. Do you know the reason why we wear poppies on Remembrance Day? It's because they are the flowers that grew in the battlefields after the end of World War I. Here are your diary days. And your diary dates. The 15th of March, the Star Awards at the Binary Centre at 1.30pm. 30th of March, Aspires Culture Day at Leeds Irish Centre. 7th to the 10th of April, Easter Holidays. 1st of May, Spring Bank Holiday. 8th of May, the King's Coronation Bank Holiday. 29th of May, Summer Bank Holiday. 19th to the 23rd of June, Leeds Learning Disability Week. And finally, our 2023 Equality and Diversity Calendar is out now, packed full of useful dates and information. Don't forget to tell us about your good news stories so we can let everyone know about them. Please send them to Carol Benson at newsletter at aspirecbs.org.uk. The next edition of Your News will be out in April 2023. Thank you for watching Your News.